from Santa Clara, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering Altitude 2020. Brought to you by Aviatrix. Our next panel is the Aviatrix Certified Engineers, also known as ACES. This is the folks that are certified, they're engineering, they're building these new solutions. Please welcome Toby Foss from Informatica, Stacey Linear from Teradata, and Jennifer Reed with Victor Davis to the stage. I want to know. Oh, there it is. Welcome. All right. I was hey, just going to ask, where's the jacket? How are you? You okay. got to show it, baby. How are you? Where's your jacket, Toby? Okay. <laughs> you get it done. That's awesome. I was oh. just going to. I was just going to rib, uh, rib you guys and say, where's your jackets? <laughs> and Jen's got the jacket on. Right. Okay, good. Love the Aviatrix Aces uh, pilot gear there above the clouds. That's right. Soaring to new heights. That's right. So guys, Aviatrix Aces, love the name. I think it's great, certified. This is all about getting things engineered. So there's a level of certification. I want to get into that. But first, take us through the day in the life of uh, an ace. And just to point out, Stacy's a squad leader. So he's, he's like a squadron leader. Squadron leader. Yeah. Uh, squadron leader. So he's got a bunch of aces underneath him. But share your perspective, day in the life. Jennifer, we'll start with you. Uh, sure. So I have um, actually a, a whole team that uh, works for me, both in the, in the North America, both in the US and in Mexico. And so uh, I'm eagerly working to get them certified as well, Great. so I can become a squad leader myself. Um, but, <laughs> but it's important because one of the, the critical gaps that we've found is um, people having the networking background, uh, because they're, you graduate from um, college and you have a lot of computer science background, you can program, you've got Python, but networking and packets, they just don't get. And so uh, just taking them through all of the processes that it's really necessary to understand when you're troubleshooting is really critical. Mm -hmm. And um, because you're going to get an issue where uh, you need to figure out where exactly is that happening on the network? You know, is, is, is my, my issue just in the VPC? Is it on the instance side as a security group? Or is it going on-prem? Mm -hmm. And is it something actually um, embedded within um, Amazon itself? I mean, I sh troubleshot an issue for about six months going back and forth with Amazon, uh, and it was the VGW and VPN, um, because they were <laughs> auto-scaling on two sides, and um, we ended up having to pull out the Cisco's and put in Aviatrix so I could just say, okay, it's fixed, and uh, actually actually help the application teams get to that and get it solved. Yeah. But um, taking a lot of junior people and getting them through that certification process yeah. so they can understand and see the network the way I see the network, I mean, look, I've been doing this uh, for 25 years when I got out, when I went in the Marine Corps, that's what I did. And coming out, the network is still the network, but people don't get the same training they get they got in the 90s. They well, it's just, just so easy to just write some software. The network takes care of itself, yeah. right? These software I know, guys. it's pixie yeah. desk. Toby, what you, we'll get, I'll come back to that. <laughs> I want to come back to that, that problem solved with Amazon, but Toby. Uh, I think the, the only life. thing I have to uh, add to that is that it's always the network fault. <laughs> um, as long as I've been in networking, it's always been the network's fault. Sure. And uh, I'm even to this day, you know, it's still the network's fault. And part of being a network guy is that you need to prove when it is and when it's not your fault. And uh, that means you need to know a little bit about a hundred different things um, to make that. And point. now you've got a full stack, DevOps, you've got to know a lot more times yep. another hundred. And these Stacey, times are changing, yep. Stacey, you're a squadron leader, I get that right. What is, what is a squadron leader first? Can you describe what it is? What I think it's do? probably just <laughs> leading all the, the network components of it, but I think from my perspective, when to pick about what you asked them was, it's about no issues and no escalation. So if, if my day is like that, I'm happy to be That's a good outcome. Yep. That's a good day. It sure is. Is I there a good day? day. There's good day. Well, you <laughs> just said you had a good day with Amazon. <laughs> Jennifer, you mentioned the Amazon thing. This brings up a good point. You know, when you have these new waves come in, you have a lot of new things, new use cases, a lot of the finger pointing, it's that guy's problem, that girl's problem. So what is, right. how do you solve that? And how do you get the young uh, guns up to speed? Is there training? Is it this is where the certification comes in? Well, this is where the certification is really going to come in. I, I know when we, uh, we got together at reInvent, one of the, the questions that, uh, that we had with, with Steve and the team was, what, what should our certification look like? You know, should we just be teaching about what Aviatrix troubleshooting brings to bear? Like, what should that be like? And I think Toby and I were like, no, 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 no. That's going a little too high. We need to get really low because the, the better someone can get at actually understanding 
um, what's actually happening in the network and, and where to actually troubleshoot the problem, how to step back each of those processes. Because without that, it's just a big black box and they don't know. Right. Right. You know, because everything is abstracted in Amazon and in, a in Azure and in Google, it's abstracted and they have these virtual gateways, they have uh, VPNs that you just don't have the logs on. Right. And so you just don't know. And so then what tools can you put in front of them of where they can look? Because there are flow logs. Well, as long as they turned on the flow logs when they built it, you know, and there's like each one of those little things that, well, if they had decided to do that when they built it, it's there. But if you can come in later to really supplement that with training to actual troubleshoot and do a packet capture here as it's going through, then teaching them how to read that right. even. Yeah, Toby, we were talking before we came on, up on stage about your career, you've been networking all your time, and then you know, you're now mentoring a lot of younger people. Yeah. How is that going? Because the people who come in fresh, they don't have all the old war stories. Like, they don't. They don't, they don't. <laughs> you talk about, the, you know, it's never fall. I walk in bare feet in the snow when I was your age. I mean, it's so easy now, right? They yeah. say, what's your take on how you train the young people? So I've noticed two things. One is that they are up to speed a lot faster in generalities of networking. Um, they can tell you what a network is in high school level now, where I didn't learn that till midway through my career. And uh, um, they're learning it faster, but they don't necessarily understand why it's that way here. You know, everybody thinks that it's always slash 24 for a subnet, and they don't understand why you can break it down smaller, or why it's really necessary. Um, so the, the ramp up speed is much faster for these guys that are coming in but they don't understand why and they need some of that background knowledge to see where it's coming from and why is it important. And us old guys, that's where we thrive. So. Jennifer, you mentioned you, you got in from the Marines. Tell us about when you got into networking, how, what was it like then and compare it now? Because oh my God. There's, there's, <laughs> they're almost like we heard earlier, static versus dynamic. Don't be static, because back then you just set up the network, you got a perimeter. Yeah, no, there good. was no such thing. Yeah, <laughs> no, so back in the, the day, I mean, I mean, we had Banyan Vines for email. And you know, we had Token Ring. And I had to set up Token Ring networks and figure out why that didn't work. Um, because how many of things were actually sharing it. Um, but then actually just cutting fiber and running fiber cables and dropping them over um, you know, shelters to plug them in. And oh crap, they swung it too hard and shattered it. Now I got to sit and figure eight polish this thing and actually shoot light to see if it works. I mean, that was the network. Crimp five, cat five cables to run an ethernet, you know? And then from that, just setting up the network switches, dumb switches, like those were the most common ones you had. Uh, then actually configuring routers and, you know, logging into a Cisco router and actually knowing how to configure that. And it was funny because I had gone all the way up and was a software product manager um, for a while. So I've gone all the way up the stack and then uh, two and a half, three years ago, I came across to, uh, to um, work with Entity Group that became Victor Davis, but we went to help one of our customers, Avis, and it was like, okay, so we need to fix the network. Okay, I haven't done this in 20 years, but all right, let's get to it. You know, because it really fundamentally does not change. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the network. I mean, I've had people tell me, well, you know, when we go to containers, we will not have to worry about the network. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you don't, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And this with the programmability is really interesting. It, it so really I think is. this brings up the certification. What are some of the new things that people should be aware of that come in with the Aviatrix A certification? What are some of the highlights? Can you guys share some of the, some of the highlights around the certification? I think some of the importance is that it's, um, it doesn't need to be vendor specific for network generality or basic networking knowledge. And instead of learning how Cisco does something or how Palo Alto does something, we need to understand how and why it works as a basic model and then understand how each vendor has gone about that problem and solved it in a general. Um, that's true in multi-cloud as well. Um, you can't learn how cloud networking works without understanding how AWS and Azure and GCP are all slightly the same but slightly different and some things work and some things don't. I think that's probably the, the number one take. I think having a certification across clouds is, is really valuable because we heard the global SIs yes. especially help with the business issues. Um, what does it mean to do that? Is it code? Is it networking? Is it configuration? Is it Aviatrix? What is the, I mean obviously Aviatrix is your, the ACE certification, but what is it about the multi-cloud that makes it multi-networking and multi 
bender and mold. What, what is the, what is the, the easy answer is yes. That's yes, true it's for all, all of us. us. <laughs> I was going to say. So you got to be a generalist, get your hands in all. You have to be. Yeah. Right, and it, it takes experience um, because it's um, every every cloud vendor has their own certification, um, whether that's SysOps and. Um, and advanced networking and advanced security or whatever it might be, yeah, they can take the test, but they have no idea how to figure out what's wrong with that system. Um, and the same thing uh, with any certification, but it's really getting your hands in there yeah. and actually having to troubleshoot the problems, mm -hmm. you know, and actually work the problem, you know, and, and calm down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, because I don't know how many calls I've been on or even had Aviatrix join me on. It's like, okay, so everyone calm down. Let's figure out what's happening. It's like we've looked at that screen three times, looking at it again, it's not gonna solve that problem, right? But at the same time, you know, remaining calm, but knowing that it really is, I'm getting a packet from here to go over here, it's not working. So what could be the problem? You know, and actually stepping them through those scenarios. But that's like, you only get that by having to do it, you know, and, and seeing it and going through it. And then so you I get have a, it. I have a question. So we, you know, I just see it. Uh, we started this program maybe six months ago. We're seeing a, a huge amount of interest. I mean, we're oversubscribed on all the training sessions. We've got people flying from around the country, even with coronavirus, flying to go to Seattle to go to these events. We're oversubscribed. A good is squadron that, leader would put their yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send them a, That's yeah. Right. So is that something that you see in your organizations? Are you recommending that to people? Do you see? I mean, I'm just. I guess I'm surprised, I'm not surprised, but I'm really surprised by the, the demand, if you would, of this multi-cloud network certification, because there really isn't anything like that. Is that something you guys can comment on, or do you see the same things in your organization? I see it from my side, because we operate in a multi-cloud environment, so it really helps, and it's beneficial for us. Yeah. True. I think I would add that uh, um, networking guys have always needed to use certifications to prove that they know what they know. Right. Um, it's not good enough to say, yeah, I know IP addresses or I know how a network works. And well, a couple little check marks or little letters by your right. name helps give you validity. Yeah. Um, so even in our team, we can say, hey, you know, we're using these certifications to know that you know enough of the basics and enough of the understandings that you have the tools necessary. Right. So. Okay. I guess Great. my final question for you guys is why an ACE certification is relevant, and then second part, share with the live stream folks who aren't yet ACE certified or might want to jump in to be um, AVH or certified engineers, why is it important? So why is it relevant, and why should someone want to be an ACE certified, uh, AVH certified engineer? I think my view is a little different. I think uh, certification comes from proving that you have the knowledge not proving that you get a certification to get, no, I mean, they're backwards. So when you've got the training and the understanding and the, you use that to prove and you can like grow your certification list with it versus studying for a test to get a certification and have no understanding of the. Okay, so then who is the right person to look at this and say, I'm qualified? Is it a network engineer? Is it a DevOps person? What's your, you know, is it a certain? You know, I think cloud is really the okay. answer. Um, yeah. It's the, as we talked, like the edge is getting eroded, so is the network definition getting eroded. We're getting more and more of some network, some DevOps, some security, lots and lots of security, because network is so involved in so many of them that it's just the next progression. Yeah. Stacey, you want to add something there? I would say I expand that to more automation engineers because we have those now, so I'd okay. probably extend it to that field as well. Jennifer, you want yeah. to? Well, I think the, the training classes themselves are, are helpful, um, especially the entry level ones for um, people who may be um, quote unquote cloud architects but have never done anything in networking for them to understand why we need those things um, to really work. Uh, whether or not they go through to eventually get a certification is something mm -hmm. different, but I really think fundamentally understanding how these things work, it makes them yeah. a better architect, makes them better application developer, but even more so as you deploy more of your applications into the cloud, really getting an understanding even from our people who've traditionally done on-prem networking, they can understand how that's going to work in the cloud too. Well, I know we've got just under 30 seconds left, but I want to get one more question in, just one more. For the folks watching that are maybe younger that don't have that networking training, from your experiences, each of you can answer, why should they know about networking? What's the benefit? What's in it for them? Motivate them, share some insights on why they should go a little bit deeper in networking. Stacey, we'll start with you, we'll go down. I'll say it's probably fundamental, right? If you want to deliver solutions, networking is the very top. 
I would say if you, um, fundamental of an operating system running on a machine, how those machines talk together um, is a fundamental change, is something that start from the base and work your way up. Jennifer. Right. Well, I think it's a challenge um, because you, you've come from top down. Now you're going to start looking from bottom up and you want those different systems to cross communicate. Yeah. And say you've built something and you're overlapping IP space. Not that that doesn't happen, <laughs> but how can I actually make that still operate without having to re-IP and re-platform? It's just like those challenges, like those younger um, developers or sys engineers can really start to get their hands around mm -hmm. and understand those complexities and bring that forward in their career. They got to know how the, how the yeah. pipes are working. And they got to know right. what's going to plumbing. That's right. And they got to know how it works and how to code it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you guys for great insights. Ace Certified Engineers, also known as ACES. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Toby, that was great. Thank you. Okay. All right. That concludes my portion. Thank you, Steve, thanks for having John, me. John, thank you very much. Thanks, that was fantastic, everybody. Round of applause for John Furrier. Yeah. So, uh, great event, great event. I'm not going to take long. We got, we got lunch outside for the, for the people here. Just a couple of things, um, just call to action, right? So, we saw the ACEs, you know, for those of you out on the stream here, become ACE certified, right? It's great for your career. It's great for no knowledge is, is, is fantastic. It's not just an Aviatrix thing. It's going to teach you about cloud networking, multi-cloud networking with a little bit of Aviatrix, exactly like the Cisco CCIE program was for IP network, that type of a thing. That's number one. Um, second thing is, 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 is learn, right? So, so there's a, there's a uh, link up there for the, for, to join the community. Again, like I started, this, this is a community, this is the kickoff to this community, and it's a movement. So go to what, ABH, um, community .avh com. We're starting a community on multi-cloud. So you know, get, get trained, learn. I'd say the next thing is we're doing over 100 seminars in, across the United States and also starting into Europe soon, um, where we'll come out and we'll actually spend a couple hours and talk about architecture and talk about those beginning things. Um, for those of you on the, you know, on the, on the live stream in here as well, you know, we're coming to a city near you. Go to one of those events. It's a great way to, to network with other people that are in the industry, as well as to start to learn and get on that multi-cloud journey. Um, and then I'd say the last thing is, you know, we haven't talked a lot about what Aviatrix does here, and that's intentional. We want you, you know, leaving with wanting to know more and schedule, get with us and schedule a multi-hour architecture workshop session. So we, we sit down with customers and we talk about where they're at in that journey and more importantly, where they're going and define that end state architecture from networking, compute, storage, everything. And everything you heard today, every panel kept talking about architecture, talking about operations. Those are the types of things that we solve. We help you define that canonical architecture, that system architecture that's yours. So, for, so many of our customers, they have three by five plotted lucid charts, architecture drawings, and it's the customer name slash Aviatrix arch network architecture, and they put it on their whiteboard. That's what, what we, and that's the most valuable thing they get from us. So this becomes their 20 year network architecture drawing that they don't do anything without talking to us and look at that architecture. That's what we do in these multi-hour workshop sessions with customers, and that's super, super powerful. So if you're interested, definitely call us and let's schedule that with our team. So anyway, I just want to thank everybody on the live stream, thank everybody here. Hopefully it was, it was very useful. Um, I think it was, and uh, join the movement. And for those of you here, join us for lunch, and thank you very much. <laughs>